Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com. Welcome back to another sound design tutorial. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to use a lot of different techniques to really effectively layer different synths together to create a much bigger overall sound. Um, now, the example we're going to be looking at um, in this video is the drop of an Elenium style demo that I actually created for my new um, future bass pack, which I highly recommend uh, checking out over at SynthHacker.com. Um, but even if this this isn't really the style that you're into producing. Um, the techniques that we're going to be looking at in this video can be used across a wide variety um, of genres. Um, so let's quickly take a listen to the sound and again specifically the sound in the drop of this demo. So a really huge sound, um, and again, even if this isn't really the genre you're into, um, we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of techniques that are really applicable to any style. Um, to be more specific, we're going to be looking at the individual layers themselves that make up the sound. Um, we're going to be looking at how to effectively use um, unison width uh, within Serum, and how to, in general, um, you know, use width to your advantage when layering different synths. Um, we're going to be looking at the uh, uh, technique using the velocity of the actual MIDI notes themselves to make specific notes stand out. Um, we're also going to be taking a look at how I use distortion um, in these synths, um, how I EQ'd the different synths individually, um, you know, adding a noise layer, uh, reverb, and also just some processing on the bus as well. Um, I'm going to try to go through these as quickly as possible. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make the individual patches from scratch because it will simply take up um, too much time, but I will show you all the different patches individually. Um, also, if Serum's not really the main synth that you use, don't worry. Um, the techniques we're going to be looking at in this video can be used for any synth or sampled sound as well. Um, you can really get some interest in layered sounds when you combine synth sounds and a sample sound as well, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, the first sound we're going to look at then is just this sub sound. Really simple stuff, just a stacked um, sawtooth wave and a sub, uh, a sine wave, sorry, for the sub. Um, the kind of saw wave is not even um, absolutely necessary. Um, the patches in mono, as you can see, we've just got a low, um, uh, a low pass filter here, and then just a basic amplitude envelope set up with no effects. Then we have our mid bass sound. Um, you can see here it's just a sawtooth wave. Again, low pass filter and envelope, no effects. We're going to go into these in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, then we have three individual stacked chord sounds. Um, these kind of vary uh, differently, and we've actually applied some different processing to each of these, uh, but I'll just quickly show you the patches. Again, a sawtooth wave with an envelope. We actually have the velocity modulating the level on this as well, which I'm going to get into. Um, the second chord sound, again, just serum, saw wave, um, seven voices of unison, um, a little bit of low pass filtering, and an envelope. Uh, again, no effects. A third chord sound, again, just a saw wave, um, pretty standard stuff. Again, it's just the processing afterwards that makes the biggest difference. I did, however, just um, get rid of some of the lows on, on this sound. And then finally, just our noise layer, uh, just using the noise oscillator within Serum, and specifically the ARP white uh, noise uh, waveform, or noise source, I should say. Um, and yeah, that pretty much covers it. Again, I think I just removed some of the layers from that as well. So the first thing to mention, I think, is the width and how each of these individual um, chord sounds actually vary from one another. Of course, a sub layer is just mono, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, I did just include a little bit of width um, for this bass sound. And specifically, if you go into the global tab here, um, you can actually control the unison width. So that's basically how wide um, the five different unison voices are. And I had that set to 32. And gener generally, you see that the, the idea is the further we go up the frequency spectrum, the wider we've made the sound, with the exception of this chord one sound, which is kind of like the main um, melodic element of the sound as a whole. I actually made this um, mono just so that it really sticks out in the middle um, and the lead melody will kind of come through on any system, even if it's mono. Um, so if we go into Serum here, 
you can actually see if we go into the global tab that I've set the unison width for this to zero. So this is a very modern sound, um, but actually it's only using one voice of unison anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. But then as we go further up the frequency spectrum, so if we go to the chord layer two here, you can see that I've uh, set this to a unison width of 49. So this is a, this is slightly wider uh, than our bass sound. And then if we go to this th third chord sound I've made, I've actually made this 100% uh, width. And uh, also for the noise waveform, um, I've included this isotope um, ozone stereo width plugin. Um, I'll just quickly, if I solo the noise here. <laughs> you can actually see um, the kind of stereo pattern of where the sound's going. And if I bypass this, you can hear that's like much more mono. So essentially what we're doing here is the further up the frequency spectrum we go, which I'll show you in the EQ in just a second, we're making the sound get wider and wider. Um, just to go back to this chord one sound um, as well, I wanna show you the velocity trick that I was telling you guys about. So what I noticed in the actual Elenium track was there were specific notes within the chord sound that really stuck out. Um, and the way I achieved this was for those notes, if I just hi um, highlight all these velocities here, um, you can see I've actually, for those relevant notes, increased the velocity to full. And again, if we go back into Serum here, um, you can actually see that I've um, set the velocity um, to be modulating the level of oscillator B. So that just means that specific notes within um, our kind of MIDI are actually being um, made louder, uh, which is like really, really cool way to make specific uh, a specific melody kind of stand out, especially when there's actually kind of no lead sound being played over the top um, as well. Um, I also added a little bit of distortion to this um, kind of main layer um, and a little bit to the mid bass as well. I just used um, some of Sound Toys the Capitator, which is a really great distortion saturation plugin uh, that I really like. Um, you can see the settings for that there. It's just, again, really subtle. You can just use any distortion or saturation uh, for this, really. So just now, uh, let's get into the EQ, which is really the fundamentals um, of kind of layering a sound. And that's what's really, really important. Um, so you can see if um, I'm using on each of these individual tracks, I'm using uh, Neutron, which is a really great um, kind of all-in-one processing tool that I've been using a lot recently, um, and specifically mainly just using the equalizer um, section. So really any EQ that you guys have will, will do for this task. So for our sub, you can see I'm just going from um, around kind of 20 um, hertz up to around 150 um, with a really sharp 48 dB roll-off. Um, if I go into the mid bass, I'll uh, kind of low mid bass, um, you can actually see we're going from about 150 to 400. Then if we go to our main chord sound, um, you can see we're going from about um, just below 400 to about 3000. And then our second chord sound, uh, we're going from uh, just below 1000 hertz up to about 5000 before it's rolled off. Our third chord sound, uh, we're going from, if we go into our equalizer here, um, about a thousand up to about six thousand. And then finally, um, our noise layer, um, we actually have it from about six thousand up to about uh, about fourteen thousand, fifteen thousand, something like that. So, what this actually does, um, if we kind of listen to each of these layers individually, you can kind of hear they, have, they exist within their own kind of uh, frequency spectrum. So, that's the sub the bass, chord one, chord three, and then obviously again, all together. So what's really cool about that is you'll notice each of the individual sounds on their own doesn't really sound that great at all. Um, but then once they're all kind of grouped together um, and all those different frequency uh, frequencies come together, it creates one big cohesive sound, which is 
you know, really, really cool. Um, and that's kind of the key, really, to good synth layering. A lot of people, when they're layering synths, will try and take two really big sounds from two different synths or two different sound sources and then kind of wonder why they don't really gel together. And that really is the key to good synth layering, is for each layer, making sure that each layer has its own kind of space within the fe frequency spectrum um, to exist, really. Um, so just, uh, I guess, the, the other things to look at really is like the reverb and the um, processing that I put on the bus for all these synths as a whole. Um, one really cool tip I can give you guys to make sure all these um, synth different synths gel together is actually to use the same um, type of reverb on them all. Um, you can really vary the wet and dry of them individually, but really if you put all these sounds in the same kind of virtual space, I always find that that really kind of gels them together. Um, it's not ex it's not completely necessary, but that's just a tip you guys might want to bear in mind. Um, so I actually have an instance of Altiverb on all these. Um, I could have just set up a bus to send all these to, but I'm lazy like that. Um, so you can see I'm just using the exact um, the exact same type of reverb on all these different synths, um, in particular this Rev7 reverb. Um, and then I've just got different kind of wet and dry amounts. Um, for, for most of these as well. Um, I'd recommend just playing around with that. Maybe, for instance, if you want the chord one um, or a specific part of the synth layer to stick out more than the others, you might put a little bit less reverb on it so it sounds a little bit more um, up front or something like that. Um, and then finally, I guess we can just look at the synth bus. Um, I just added a simple bit of compression um, just to really kind of uh, glue the sounds together. Um, I'll show you it uh, without and then with. without So as you can see from the gain reduction uh, level here it is really subtle but it just kind of makes sure um, it just kind of really makes sure that all the different layers work together and you don't end up with a summing of particular frequencies that end up too loud and it helps kind of tame the sound back a little bit. Something else you could do, could have done uh, that I didn't really do, um, I guess if you wanted to get like really in depth and really kind of in detail, um, you could also put an EQ on the synth bus as a whole just to tame specific frequencies as well. Um, but you can, because each of these individual uh, layers is in in its own kind of frequency spectrum, you can really achieve that simply just by changing the levels of the individual um, tracks themselves rather than you know using an EQ on the whole sound. Um, so that pretty much covers it, uh, guys. Hopefully you got a lot of use out of this tutorial. Again, these techniques can really be applied to any um, genre. You don't have to use six sounds. You know, you can just layer two. Um, again, just make sure, I guess, that the higher up the uh, frequency spectrum you go, you can make the sound wider. Um, that, that always ends up really cool, I think. Um, again, make sure that if there's specific uh, notes you want to stick out and the synth layer that you're kind of doing is a chord sound you can play around with the velocity of certain notes to make certain melodies stick out um, again um, you can play around with distortion and saturation on certain layers if you want you want to really push them and make them stand out um, the main thing though to, again to make sure is that just that each individual layer exists within an, a specific part of the frequency spectrum and that really helps the two layers not to clash and to create like a cohesive whole um, the other thing, again, you can just add a noise layer. Um, I achieved um, making kind of like a wide sound with a noise layer by using Isotope's um, stereo width plugin. Um, there's a bunch that you can um, kind of, uh, uh, there's a bunch of different plugins that you can check out if you just Google like stereo imaging plugin. Um, and that's really useful, say, um, if the synths that you have don't offer any kind of unison width control or something like that. Um, it's really cool to just kind of uh, manually do it yourself. Um, and uh, again, reverb, um, if you use the same one on all the different layers, it really helps gel them together and put them in the same space, even if they're not particularly on the same dry-wet setting. Um, say you want one section of the synth to stand out, you can make it a little bit drier than the others. And, and then finally, again, just the uh, bus compression, um, just to kind of tame stuff, and then you might want to add an EQ afterwards.
So that covers um, most of the tips that I know on how to layer at Synths effectively. If you have any other tips, feel free to leave them down below. Um, I am always trying to learn new things myself, so I really appreciate that. Um, again, if you haven't done so already, definitely subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay up to date with future videos. Um, and check out my website over at synthhacker.com if you haven't done so already. I recently updated it so it no longer looks like it was made in Microsoft Paint. Um, there's a new future pack on there to check out with all of the sounds that you heard in this demo. Um, so yeah, check that out if you haven't done so already. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.